Mr. Speaker, uh, I have a resolution at the desk, House Concurrent Resolution 207. Clerk will report the title of the concurrent resolution. House Concurrent Resolution 207. Concurrent resolution recognizing the 60th anniversary of the United States Air Force as an independent military service. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Spratt, and the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Turner, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of House Resolution 207, recognizing the 60th anniversary of the United States Air Force as an independent military service. I thank my colleague in particular from New Mexico, Heather Wilson, for her partnership and collaboration in helping to bring this bipartisan measure before the House. I want also to recognize the outstanding leadership of the co-chairs of the Air Force Caucus, Cliff Stearns of Florida, Sam Johnson of Texas, Jim Marshall of Georgia, for their participation. Sixty years ago in July, President Truman and Congress distilled the lessons learned from World War II into landmark legislation known as the National Security Act of 1947. On September 18, the armed forces were reorganized under a Department of Defense, and the Air Force was established as a military department co-equal to the departments of the Army and the Navy. The question of whether Air Forces should be a service on their own, separate from the ground forces, arose long before it was resolved in the National Security Act of 1947. Over a period of 40 years, airmen earned that recognition, beginning with aeronautical division's earliest exploits in 1907, followed by the daring do of the Army Air Service in World War II, and then by the superior performance of the Army Air Corps, later the Army Air Forces, in World War II. American airmen performed well, so well, in fact, that when battles were fought in the air, they were won decisively, making air superiority a standing assumption. This tradition started with World War II, with aviators like General Doolittle. During the war in North Africa and Europe, General Eisenhower and General Spots, as commander of the Army Air Forces, worked well together. General Eisenhower came to appreciate the capabilities of air power and the role of the Air Force in achieving victory. He called General Spots, his words, quote, the best operational airman in the world, and became persuaded that the Air Force should exist alongside and equal to the Army and the Navy. I compared this arrangement to a three-legged stool, where each leg is essential to the whole. It's a principle alive, well, and working today. Since its origin, the Air Force has stayed abreast of our national security requirements, adding missiles to aircraft, and through a long Cold War, deterring any attack upon our country. The Air Force is typically called when we need to gain air superiority or deliver troops and materiel whenever, wherever the, the need arises. Its airlift and tanker capabilities give us the advantage of remote presence. Its satellites give us the surveillance and communication capabilities that are the gold standard, surpassing anything any country in the world possesses. Not only has the Air Force achieved a technical overmatch against our adversaries in the air, but in space and cyberspace as well. In today's Air Force, over 700,000 total force airmen are at work as we speak, exercising vigilance, reach and power around the world. They are operating intelligence from reconnaissance aircraft and spacecraft. They're supplying early warning and real-time intelligence and situational awareness to the warfighters on the ground. They are critical presence in the battle space of Afghanistan and Iraq. They're airlifting cargo and passengers and using refueling assets to build air bridges, projecting power, and sustaining the fight. Although the hardware tends to get the headlines, it's the people who make it work and make the Air Force who make the Air Force what it is. When General Horner came home from the Persian Gulf in 1991, I asked him, who were the unsung heroes? And he answered without hesitation, well, for one, it's our NCOs. Their quality has literally gone out of sight. I was reminded of what General Horner said when I was at Shore Air Force Base in my district not long ago and met with the Fighting M20th and its wing commander, Colonel Post along with airmen and women, many of them about to deploy. They will be part of some 35,000 other airmen deployed around the globe. Because of them and others like them, we have the best Air Force in the world, bar none. House concurrent resolution is our way, as members of Congress, as citizens of this nation, 
of expressing our appreciation of recognizing the United States Air Force, its leaders, and its airmen for consistently proving their worth to our nation and helping make this the land of the free and the home of the brave. Let me conclude with the resolving clause. Congress remembers, honors, and commends the achievements of the United States Air Force in serving and defending our country on the 60th anniversary of the creation of the Air Force as an independent military service. I reserve the balance of my time.